All right. We are back with another episode of Pound for Pound. I am the Nigerian Nightmare, Kamaru Usman. And I am the Triple C, Henry Cejudo. And today we have an amazing guest and a, you know, an esteemed guest, shall I say. A man that I've looked up to, that I've seen on, on you know, multiple shows. You know, you know the big ones, Shark Tank. But a man that I knew a lot about growing up in my childhood. The entrepreneur legendary serial entrepreneur, should we say, uh, Mr. Damon John. Man, thank you, thank you. A Shot of Lime production. Do you remember how we met? Do you remember how we met? Yeah. We were in Club, club 11. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, tell me more. Tell me more. I said, oh, no, 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 Club 11, I was walking by. I said, who's, who's mine? I said, yo, man. Yo, man, I practice karate, baby. <laughs> and he said, you want to come to the gym? I said, no, I said I practice it in the mirror. <laughs> Why? Yeah! That was it. <laughs> Give me your number, man. Listen, Wait, you wouldn't think. That was it. <laughs> that was it. I know how to practice karate. I practice. D, it's, um, it's a pleasure to be able to actually, you know, finally have you. I mean, we've bumped into each other a few times. Yeah, man. But never really got the pleasure to sit down and talk and, and hopefully one day break bread. Yeah, man. We but, will. Um, Absolutely. You know. I'm gonna just start it off. A big part of my childhood was jean co jeans mm -hmm. and FUBU shirts. Mm. You know, I'm not gonna hold you. I'm not gonna lie. I wore a couple bootlegs. Mm -hmm. You know, I couldn't <laughs> afford. The, I couldn't afford the real deal. Uh -huh. You know, but I wore the bootlegs, and I just, you know, had to just cover up when I walked by people in class, so they <laughs> wouldn't notice that. Hey, hey, they, cause that was the thing. <laughs> Yo, he got that, fake Fubu shirt on. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> that was the thing. It was. Yeah. I mean, I, I've heard a bit of, of of your story. Yeah. Of creating that such a brand and just growing it to where it was such a massive brand worldwide I mean starting out first and foremost for us is the belief like did you have that belief in yourself that you could build something so monumental absolutely not uh, my partners and I wanted to just have a maybe a clothing store that all four of us could work at that's it that's it um, and uh, you know, but my mother would always say to me that anything you see in this world, you'd like this building, anything in this world, planes, anything, started with one person with one idea that took one action, and why couldn't it be me? And I, and I never had an answer for her when she said it. She said, because I would say, oh, this person's dead. That person came from nothing. Yeah. Bro, that person came from nothing. And, and if you, I, just, I just kept hacking the system, and I just used a lot of common sense. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, but but I also feel like you're getting a chance to kind of you know touch up touch up on your sharks. I'm I'm a big Shark Tank guy. Yeah, like, I, I like like I will literally I'll watch that. And one of my favorite persons on that show is actually you, because I could tell you're strict with business. Whether it's a little girl that's selling cookies, yeah, or it's a or it's a dude that's you know that is somebody his cat just died. It's like <laughs> I just you know it's just not part of me. But I also feel like, too, Damien, it's like, it's been your up, upbringing. It's how is it that you're raising? I think you were able to see the light through through the hardships that kind of happened in your life. And I think I think there's there's that one point where something ringed in your mind. It's like, all right, it's time to kind of make that change. Yeah, well, that happened. That happened. I was always a hustler, and I was always thinking about ways to make money. But that happened. I was the cool kid that said, because I, I was on some of the first... Uh, national rap tours as a roadie so i was on the i was on the, the tour with um ll cool j and run dmc and all that right and so the story really is that me and three other friends kept going on those tours we would show up right uh, you know when train whatever the cases we get there so one of my friends was like oh i'm gonna be a big uh director the other one was like i'm gonna be huge in in music as a DJ, another one was like, I'm going to be the biggest drug dealer. And I was like, I'm going to be the biggest <laughs> clothing designer, right? And I was about 14. Now, we all became who we are. So that was me, Irv Gotti, um, Hype Williams. And then Hype wrote the movie Belly about my man who said he's going to be the biggest drug dealer who just came home two years ago after 27 years. So we all had this passion, but we grew up in Hollis, Queens. So Hollis, Queens is someplace where... Like, so many massive music artists came from, like Yellow Cool J, Salt and Pepper, Tribe Called Quest, 50 Cents, Ja Rule, all of them. So we had this thing. So I was the cool kid who decided I'm not going to go to college because I was already dyslexic. 
Um, and I said, I'm going to take a year off. And that year became four or five years. Now I'm working at Red Lobster. I'm 23 years old. All the kids back in the day, we call them ducks or geeks or whatever, nerds. Yeah. They were coming back from college, and I was getting them shrimp at Red Lobster, and I was embarrassed. I was, uh, I was like, maybe I'm, not, maybe I'm not the smart dude I thought I was. And then and that's when I said, I got to double and triple down on using when I have my resources to create something that I love. And that's when I started really creating FUBU. And, uh, and it really started around 20. Uh, it started around 20. It started so really I was around 20. And up until 28, I did everything. And I was almost homeless at tw 28. And then I blinked my eyes. And at 30, I had $50 million liquid in the bank. How is that? Like, you, you, well, there wasn't online banking back then. But, mm -hmm. but how is that just... Seeing the zeros and, z and zeros yeah. and zero because yeah. we're we're you know growing up we don't yeah. see that yeah so it was it was, a, it was a really good feeling yeah but so, so you you pretty much bet on yourself like you're willing to take that risk and I think a lot of that too is I mean obviously it was you you didn't have uh at that time maybe a significant other or kids or whatnot like trying to lead this dream to bring it up to what it to where eventually it went. You know, I had a mother. I, you know, I had a mother who believed in me. Um, and I had my crew. I had my friends, you know. Now, don't get me wrong. If you remember FUBU with the big old five, the theory was always to have five partners, five of us. We didn't want to be like Calvin Klein or anybody with one person. It's five of us. And if all five of us liked the way that something looked, you had, the, you know, you had a great common denominator. But the fifth member never stuck around. So we went through 10 of those fifth members. So there's, there's 10 dudes walking around saying, yo, you know me, I'm the fifth member yeah. of FUBU. But um, but I had my community, man. You know, I had um, uh, I had the people in the streets. But I didn't have anybody like like you know until I got my partners. I didn't have anybody. I'm an only child. But what what was it that really? Because obviously the clothing business, the drink business, it's a very competitive market. What separated you guys? Whether it was the marketing, the something in the material, like what, no, what no, no. separated you, know, you guys? It, it's in not competitive. There's always an angle, right? Because the most successful product in Shark Tank is one of my products, and it's called Bomba Socks. It's socks. It, but, you know, they they came on doing 700000 They'll do $1.5 billion this year. And every pair of socks they, 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 they sell, they give away a pair of the homeless. So the hip-hop community is a very homophobic community, or it was. So let me tell you something. When I first was making clothes, me and my, fr my friends and I, right, my dudes would be like, yo, I'm going to go sell this key, or I'm going to go sell this. And I'm like, yo, man, I just got a strawberry pattern. You got to see what I'm going to do with this shirt. They'd be like, what? So a lot of these cats didn't talk to me. <laughs> yeah. So you gonna you gonna you gonna go make what? a you gonna go make a shirt? A strawberry shirt? What? <laughs> because of course, the, who would the design be for that? Very flamboyant. Yeah. People, right. We're talking yeah. about '89 when I first started. '92. Yeah. So they didn't see me coming. And unlike we all come from the hood, unlike uh, most cats who come from the hood and cats latch on. By the time those cats tried to get on to me, and they, they, they saw in the, in the magazine that we were doing $400 million or $350 million a year annually, they were like, yo, we need to get into clothing. It's the same thing. You know, it's like when 50 started to crack open, you know, the water, everybody wanted to get on it. You know, it, it's always that type of thing. But if, you're, if you have that first angle or something, I love to do it. And the, and the main reason I did FUBU was when we would go to the video sets, they would kick everybody off the video set. So... I was starving. I wanted to talk to the girls. I wanted to eat the free food. And I wanted to see amazing hip hop artists like Method Man and all them perform. Yeah. So I'd be like, yo, man, I got the shirt here. I'm here to, I'm, 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 I'm here to, I'm here to style the artists. Yeah. They let me sit around. That was the first, that was the main reason that I started. Uh, thank you, thank you. You know, you know, it's all about applying common sense to a lot of these things, you know, and I, I don't know, as you are obviously at the top of the top of your game uh, against thousands, millions of people who want to fight, uh, who want to have, who want to apply, you know, combat rules. I'm right. sure there's a lot of basic common yeah. sense yeah. thinking a, a, along with and, strategy. And, yeah. And can I tell you, can I tell you something too, David, about that? Even as a fighter, it's the same shit. It's the more you understand the simplicity, the simplicity of the basics, I understand how to set things up a little bit better, yeah. is what gets you to where you want to get to. That's what it is. And I know you brought something up. You said tactics. It's tactics. 
it's tactical at the, at the cream of the crop when you get to the the level of where me and Kamara Usman has been of winning world titles. How can you strategize and create a different game plan where you're throwing this dude off, where you're able to make him fight that B side? Yeah, and a, and a, and a big thing with that is, and I, I want to pivot a bit is. I was so indulged in, as you mentioned, the hip hop culture and the, yeah. in, in, in the brand. And when you came up with FUBU, I mean, and that thing really exploded on the scene and it was, it was there. But also growing up, I was a part of this movement to where I saw the, you know, it go all the way up. And then I felt like I saw it kind of fizzle out. Mm -hmm. And, but you, it fizzled out, but you didn't fizzle out. We're still here talking to you right now is how are you able to make that pivot? It's applying common sense. If I looked at all the brands and I said, an average brand lasts five to seven years, um, and you're not talking about the, the unicorns like Nike and Louis Vuitton, but um, Levi's is doing 18 billion now, they went down to three, now they're back up, United Color, or Benetton, Latigo, whatever the case is. I'm not gonna let my ego get in the way and then say, oh, this is gonna naturally do it. So what do I do? What am I? Am I a great designer? No, I'm not. Putting a big ass 05 and an FB on a hoodie ain't a great designer. What are my assets? Well, now I'm really known, so now I know that if I go to Macy's and say, hey, I'm gonna take this brand FUBU, I just bought a brand that's defunct named Coogee, the Biggie Small wears, and I'm gonna put that through the pipeline. I represent the Kardashians and nobody in the world wants to dress these four, these three girls that I know are going to be super famous. So if you look in the first four, four seasons of the Kardashians, they're wearing all Coogee for $75,000 a year. And I know how to put it on other people. That is common sense to me, right? And what is my skill set? I'm a manufacturer and somebody who Macy's ago, well, why do I deal with anybody new if I know you're going to take back goods? I know you're going to support me. That's my skill set. Other people let their egos get in the way. If I'm going to MTV and say, how much is it for a 30-second commercial? And they go, $10,000. I go over to BET and they go, $1,000. Why? Well, MTV shows that a million people watch a commercial. BET shows that 100,000 people watch a commercial. And I go, I ain't never seen no Nielsen rating box in the goddamn projects. And in those projects, in one room, there's 20 people. Yeah, I'm going to pay the $1,000 here, and I'm going to get $10 million worth of shit for what you're paying for that. It's common sense to me. When's the last, when, when have you ever seen somebody with a Nielsen rating box? In the, it's, all, it's all bootleg cable. So it's applying common sense. If I walk out here today and somebody doesn't want to do a deal with me for a million dollars, I say, no problem. Why don't you want to do a deal? I don't need your money. Okay. Your wife got a lotion company, right? Yeah. She's stressing the shit out of you, right? Yeah. You want somebody to advise her? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to give you $500,000 for what I offer you a million for because I'm going to take $10 million of headaches. Oh, you want a divorce? No. Now I'm going to give you $250,000 because I'm going to take all that shit off your plate. <laughs> it's all common sense. You just negotiate. It is, it is but, but you're, you're, you know, one thing that I hear even in all of that is you got the vision. Like OPM is never see, other people's money. It's other yeah. people's mind power, manufacturing, marketing, mentors, mistakes. That's where you make the money. So what somebody is not doing is just like you. When you see a weakness in something, I'm like, yo. This motherfucker's face is wide open. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That's the way I look at it. Expose him. Yeah. yeah. Expose him. No, it's it's and, and speaking of that pivoting, how where where'd the whole Shark Tank idea come in? Where 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 did that come in for you to say, you know what? We're all guys that are mega rich. Let's sit and let's 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 do this show and have guys just pitch us on ideas for us to get even more rich. Where did that, where did that well, come well, about? Well, well, see, see, Shark Tank is a format out of, uh, it's a Sony-owned format out of uh, Tokyo or something like that. And it used to be just the Japanese men and women like they would cash on the table. <clears throat> and then it, it took off, uh, it, and it took off in London, and then it took off in Canada. And then it came to America, and Mark Burnett took it and called it Shark Tank. They called me up, and I said, absolutely. They said, you want to do, do this show? And I said, uh all right, cool. And they said, you're going to have to spend your own money. I said, 
these goddamn pimps. What's wrong? I mean, these Hollywood people. I heard about not getting paid. <laughs> Is it because I'm the black guy? I'm not doing that show. And then, um, you know, it was 08. Same thing, common sense. Listen, I had 10 clothing companies, and in 08, eight of them were dead. Nobody's buying another shirt when they can't pay their mortgage. I'm only getting pitched because people like to put us all in a box. I'm only getting pitched clothing companies. But I'm saying to myself, again, when I go to JCPenney's, I want to take up more real estate. Right. Um, so I want to be able to sell them electronics. I want to sell them cosmetics. So where am I going? Oh, wait a minute. I'll go on this show and I'll get great deals and I can diversify my portfolio when I come over to them and say, if you don't want this, I got this. If you don't want this, I got that. And I'm going to have built in millions of dollars worth of advertising. So I went on the show and uh, and the show, uh, the show was not the show almost didn't get picked back up uh, two or three years in a row until Mark Cuban came on the show. The reason why the show got picked up is Mark Cuban. He saved the show. Really? Not because he was this big star who just came on, right. but none of the other fly, super business people wanted to get on the show. They said, nobody knows a Mark, uh, a Kevin, a Damon, right? And they were like, we're too big for that. And so now, now all of a sudden, the networks are saying, put superstars on like big singers and dancers, and Mark Burnett is like, Real business people are going to know that those people are not operating the business. I'm not going to do it. Kill the show. Mark Cuban finds out because he's a tech guy. He looks on Twitter and sees that the show is the top show. Watch kids 5 to 15, parents and kids together. He goes, I'm going to go on the show if it's going to help the American children. He goes on the show. Now, before that, we could, I couldn't go on Jimmy Kimmel. I couldn't go on any of those shows. They didn't know who I was. I couldn't describe the show. Think about it. They were asking me, all right, so let me get this straight. You're on Discovery during Shark Week? No. Or when they lose, they get dumped in sharks? No. Who wins? I couldn't describe the show. Okay. Mark Cuban now goes on the show. He takes it on to Ellen. He takes it on to Jimmy Kimmel. He takes it on all that. All the attention comes, the show gets picked up when it was just about to be canceled. Wow. wow. And not just that, but man, Mark Cuban has made a lot of deals. I mean, obviously, I, I, I heard that he's no longer in Shark Tank. No, he's doing one more year. Oh, he's doing one more year. One more year. By the time he finishes um, promoting, he probably, I don't know, I'm sure Mark will come back as a guest star. Um, you know, Mark just wants to be with his family. You know, his, his kids are, are And, and, and the now. show's based out of work, so you guys all fly Which, in, right? Yeah, we all fly in. We shoot the show in, uh, I think, approximately 21 days. Um, oh, down. 21 days straight? No, no, no. Two sets, September and June and September. But anyway, um, you were about to say something. I'm, I interrupt you about Mark. Sorry. No, 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 I'm just thinking. I'm, I'm just thinking about a guy like Mark who has been there, who's helped develop. And obviously, it's it's make Shark Tank. Knowing, hearing it from you now, of where it's actually developing, everybody's been able to kind of somewhat, well, not somewhat, but actually make good money. Because I watched that show quite a bit. Yeah. You know, obviously, you got Lori, you got you got Mr. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, you, have you guys built that? Do you do you guys is, is is it strictly business on the show? Everybody goes home, or have you guys been able to actually? You know, build that camaraderie until no, you guys, where you guys have. No, I mean, we're fans of each other. Oh, Kevin O'Leary, he's my Uber driver. He's right outside. Baby. You, wanna, <laughs> you know, um, we're all fans of each other. Like, I, 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 I stay over Barbara's house uh, on Fire Island. Uh, Robert and our children, uh, you know, they, they travel together. Um, oh, wow. Um, you know, we, we've been together for 15 years. You know, my wife is extremely, this is my second marriage. My wife is like a German folk. Um, the first two people besides her mother in the delivery room when we had a child was uh, uh, Robert and Barbara. No so, way. So yeah, um, we're probably we're probably they're probably some of the closest friends that I have. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Now, as you as you know, we are both fighters. Mm -hmm. um, arguably pound for pound at one point, but um, for you, I've seen you at fights. Yeah. You know, and I obviously running into you a few times. What, what is it about fighting? And not just fighting MMA in itself, that that bring that keeps you coming back to to a fight. And what was that one moment for you that got you hooked? It, it's you know I I started getting disgusted with boxing years ago. I grew up in the I grew up in the 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 you know Sugar Ray, Ali days. I grew up yeah. when they just uh, Frazier. I grew up when they went hard. Everybody was just they went, they seven, went right? hard. I mean, to the point where they were almost dead after Thrill of Manila. <laughs> and um, and then I started seeing. And I wasn't. I, I'm a fan. I'm a, I'm an event fan. You know. Um, okay. 
and uh, you know, I wanted to be a baseball player for years, and then I usually get, I, I used to get, now I'm older, I used to get upset at people who yell at the TV over basketball and football players. I had some friends of mine who were, who just do that, and I'm like, well, why don't you go out and play your damn self? But boxing and MMA is some you don't want to play your own self. Yeah. You know, you got to be really built for this. And but I really loved, you know, in those fights, those other the boxing fights, they had gotten to the point where I don't know what was going on, but it wasn't right, you know. And they held these grudges. I loved, I love how you, your fighters would be like this, yo man, I'm gonna whoop your ass, yo, I'm gonna whoop your ass. And then somebody like this is in the middle of the night going like this, I'm sorry. I will never do it again, and I was clearly wrong. And after that, you'll, you'll hug it out, and it's done. Yeah, yeah. That's a very clear, yeah. I whip your ass, yeah. say uncle. And I love that, and I just love, you know, it's just such, so much, and then, you know, um, it's just so much energy in that room. Um, and then nothing like seeing, hearing that, that boom, when you all fall on the floor. As long as I, I get those great seats, I want a cameraman with his dusty ass just gets out of my way, man. I don't want to look at the screen, man. I want to see you rear naked choking somebody. So, um, you know, I it really, I really like the BJ Penn days and- uh, um, Also, you've been a fan for a minute then. Yeah, man, back. and Silva and, uh, and what's it, what, Rampage yeah. and uh, Chuck, the, I saw Chuck the other night. I love seeing Chuck, you know, I see him in LA all the time. Yeah, man, I've been I've been a fan of this sport because I, I love it. And I love the fact that there's so many different weapons in your sport, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, uh, yeah I love I love Bowen Jones, uh, and so, of course, you know. Now, um, you know, also- But by the way, I don't know what the hell's going on. There's so many of them, I don't know, I don't know, I don't, I'm going tomorrow. Yes. I don't know who who's fighting, but I can't wait. That's that's it. That's the the thing about it is obviously when UFC started, it was you know you had that one fight to look forward to. Yeah, and now it's 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 such a business. Yeah, and it's grown so much. And and guys like fighters like myself and Henry, you know, now we're getting up there in age to where we're thinking about more than just being combatants and and, and fighting. Of course, to where now we're we're starting to kind of step in and and go into the business world and learn that we have families. We, we got to, you know, you got to feed these kids. You got to take them to school. You got to do all these things. Yeah, man. You know, what advice would you give to us is, as we have started this in building, you know, pound for pound? What, what advice would you give I can us? only give you the advice because I've, 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 I've coached so many athletes in my life and what I've learned. And, you know, Ashley told me, I was, I was throwing one of my things the other day, and I kind of call out a lot of interesting people. And um, my man from... Akbar from um, the talk and uh, Ron Artest was there. And Akbar told me one day, he said, listen, the day after you get cut or you leave a team, people don't pick up your calls. He said the day after. And he said, and you know, he went on to American Ninja and the talk. And the one thing I can say, or the two things I can say is first of all, and it's very hard, but you know, to understand who to trust, you got to first have well have financial intelligence to understand that it will go away. Because as an athlete, you peak at an early age. You see, I told you about the 50 million liquid. I forgot to tell you about the 20 million that I spent within a year. All right. And you've seen Mike Tyson do it with 300 million. You've seen Hammer do it. You've seen everybody do it. Right. <laughs> so yeah. if you got common sense, that shit can happen to you, too, because it's the same. You know, when you have a million dollars. Right. You buy maybe one house and a lot of stuff. When you have a hundred million dollars, you just buy four houses, and it's that same way you burn it. So first of all, I have financial settlement. But second of all, you work that ringside. Those people right there, at that ringside, millions and billionaires, millionaires and billionaires, they have all the money in the world, but they don't have cool. They don't have skill set. They don't have maybe they're not combatants, and they want to know you. They're right there. And you humble yourself and say, yo, man, how can I be of service to you when you can just train me and do something like that? I'm going to train you. You train me. You know how much they was like, you, really? Let's do it. You got to humble. You see, you see, an entrepreneur really walks in a room. They're humble. I learned that a long time ago. I was in a room one day in Colorado, maybe about 20 years ago. Um, this is when I had all the jewelry on and, you know, it was the East Coast, West Coast battle going on. I'm just trying to dress everybody, everybody trying to kill each other. I just want to make sure you have on your proper colors and you're happy. Yeah. So I had that bodyguards. I walk in the room. Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, Bezos, they're all in the room. But I got this big-ass bodyguard with me because, you know, we were just on the road together. 
I mean, the room's trash. They're not selling. There's no Hennessy in yeah. there. There's no Alizé. Yeah. Right? This, this is garbage. Yo, I got to get up out of here, man. Now, one Louis belt buckle, nothing. Yeah, no finger foods, nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And I'm up there, and I'm unapproachable because I'm up here with a bodyguard. I never talked to them because I walked in the room with this thing over there. They were, like, they were probably like, is that right? Never got to meet them. And you know, an entrepreneur, you walk in the room, you know, you have to have that confidence of, listen, I know this. I don't know that, man. And, you know, if there's any way I can be of value, what I know, can you help me out? People will get behind you and they will fight for you. They want to feel like they're part of your growth. And when you do that with the people right around that ringside, that's going to pay off. Yeah. Because nobody else is doing that. Yeah. Well, I'm going to take your advice. My man, I forgot I had your number in my phone. I got to hit you up. Of course. I got to hit you up and bounce ideas off of you because uh you know we're kind of in an interesting place in our in our careers and and that's balancing both we're still combatants we we still want to be the best at it but now we're understanding that when you're young you're 25 26 and you're getting into the sport it's just like oh man i need to be the best i need to be world champion that's 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 good but then you realize you hit an age and world champion don't pay your bills you know <laughs> henry how you were an olympic champion how long did that pay bills before it was, oh, well, I got to get back the out there. Where I, I went from wrestling to having a fight in the cage, <laughs> you know, so. But I think I think what Kamaru was trying to say is, like, because there's a lot of fighters that will continue to keep fighting because they don't know, they just don't know what's out there. They, the only thing they know is just fighting. So, when it, you know what I'm saying? So, it's almost like they, you have to go through that, that hard face. It happened to me winning the Olympics at age 21. Didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, I know I, I know I didn't want to do wrestling anymore, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's like getting the chance to meet a lot of business people, uh, me not understanding finance at that point, uh, you know, credit, just the, the whole nine, and then obviously picking yourself back up and really say, hey man, like there's there's a window of opportunity for us athletes to make money. We have to make it now because there's a shelf life to it, but then what comes next, and. Though I believe the only way you truly learn from that is from experience. You're going to have to fall before you come up. You, well, yeah, you do 100%. But all right, so if I were to analyze both of your assets, you know, so they're globally recognized. You're respected by the people that are coming up. So you can be the Obi-Wan Kenobi. You have people with money all around you, and you have resources. So most people don't have any of that. So now, either one of you, hey, man, I want to do some business with you. Hey, you know, tell my, I can help. Eh, that's not really for me. Okay. But I can connect you with this other young man coming up who's the next. So really? Or I can connect you over here. Really? You know, uh, uh, you know, finance companies, uh, hedge fund people, and various other things, they just connect resources. They just put puzzles together. That's what you really do, you know? Um, that's what I do on Shark Tank. I like that product. I think I know a celebrity that could put it out there further, and I think I know somebody who will license it, and I think I know a store that will sell it. So you're smart enough to know and who is it that's going to pretty much do the legwork for you. Because you, you know a lot, but you don't know everything. But you know the right people who can connect the dots. That's your, how many people can go directly to another globally recognized athlete going through a manager, through an agent? How many people can say, yo, I think this is a deal you should do, homie. Or just try to do this and show them that you give a fuck. <laughs> Without somebody like, yo, I need 20%. No, I need, give me a brown bag on the side of here. Yeah. yeah. How many people could do that? And then somebody else says to you, yo, man, thank you for not having me waste my time and all this other bullshit. You got me the yes or the no right away. I appreciate you. How many people could do that? And that's one call for you that would have taken me 40 calls. Time is the only thing you'll never get back. And you start saving people time for these contacts and various other things. And simultaneously educate yourself and ask, you know what, you probably, and this is what was what, what my fault. When I was coming up, I didn't ask my accountants what they were doing. My accountants never told me. You know why? Because they were either like, yo, he made a lot of money or I don't want to insult him. But I started saying, well, why are, we do, why are we doing that? What are you doing? And they started telling me. I started to understand. Yeah. 
And the way I got financial intelligence, I watched Jim Cramer, uh, Man Money, every single day for three years. Comes on 6 o'clock and 10 o'clock, something like that. And I looked at stocks. And I applied common sense. I realized the malls are all closed and they're not making new malls around here. Everybody has a Shopify store. I bought Shopify at $28. It went to $1,900. It's pretty simple. You know, you're, you're pretty much simplifying. So I think you yeah, now, as obviously as a, I mean, obviously everybody, because, you know, a shark, I guess you, not really a businessman mm -hmm. now, but, you know, theoretically, you know, be, being, being in that position where you're an investor, I get it a lot of times when you meet a business person, do you invest in the idea or do you invest in the person? Person, all day. Yeah. I mean, what's that? All right. So the second best pro selling product in Shark Tank history is a sponge, called a Scrub Daddy. Yeah, I, I no, buy those too. None, none of these, the fire, none of the, scrub daddies, these are. Yeah. yeah, yo, don't buy that slurry <laughs> shit. Um, <laughs> none of these are new valve on a heart. It's just simple. That's what you're talking about. That's it. And more importantly, if you really like what you're doing about it, you know, then then you're having fun. You know what I mean? But um, and don't get me wrong, I lose, I lose on a lot of deals, I lose on a lot. Um, but you win more than you actually lose. No, but it's, but it's you taking the chance. No, no, no. It it, it literally so uh, uh, a private equity or venture firm will have one or two hits out of ten. Shark Tank, you'll have three and a half, only because you have that that advertising built in yeah okay so sh so shark tank takes a p a little bit of the commission that you no, guys no no you know, just, out of, the ten just no. out of it yeah. out of the 10 you see out of the 10 i invest in yeah three and a half will win oh okay, yeah. okay. another okay. another four will yeah. go to shit. yeah and yeah. a couple will teeter-totter yeah, yeah we hear the 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 stories of the guys that you know some brands don't even get deals on no a lot of people yeah. don't that a lot of people we don't close exposure. the deal because uh so the reality of the show is that that pitch is an hour long, um, and you got 16 cameras shooting it. That's 16 hours of footage for eight minutes that you see. Um, and it takes us three to six to nine months to close the deal because, listen, I'll be like, yo, man, you owe the IRS a million dollars. Why did you tell me? But like, you ain't ask. <laughs> okay, I get it. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, or yeah. I just don't like you. Or you don't like me. Yeah. It's almost like you almost, it, and it's just, and it's just like fighting. It's like business, just like fighting. It's like, yeah, you can have a great stance and you can be very good offensively, but if you don't have a good defense, as good as you are, that right has to get in or something to get in. That really, the, no, I like the way you said that, baby. That's really going to use that on shot thing. I'm not going to give you no credit. <laughs> <laughs> it's really going to pack you up, but it actually puts you out. Your number one office is really your defense. When you are, when you have a level of success, you say no more than you say yes. And it's not about the deals that uh, you don't get. It's the deal you do, generally, because the deals you do are going to take up your time and your energy and divert you. You know, you can't say yes to everything. A lot of people think that, yo, man, you, you got money. Yeah, I like your product. I could buy one sponge. I don't need to buy the whole damn company. Yeah. You know, it's just like when you go and invest in a restaurant. I invested in a restaurant one time because I liked the food. That was the last time I ever went to that restaurant because I had to deal with the employees and mm -hmm. all this kind of stuff. I didn't, I didn't like the food anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, now you mentioned earlier you didn't get to meet those guys. Uh, now in your current position, have you met the Buffetts and the, the Buffetts and the Bezos and, and Bill Gates and those guys? You know what? I, I actually, come to think of it, I, I'm, I went in passing. I'm at Bezos and passing at Live one night, you know, but yeah, it was a passing. Yeah, my kind of guy there. Yo, yo, he was up at Live. He, 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 he was up at Live. What you doing tonight? I think he, I think he was, uh, you know, that was when he was, uh, you know, he, he, was, he was getting brand new on him. Right. But, um, no, I, I don't, I'm, but I, I, I'm fortunate enough when, he, I, I've never been asked that question. I don't think I've met them in a, uh, I don't, no, but I'm fortunate enough, I've, I've met, I've met most yeah, people. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, you, you're kind of in a position now to yeah. where it's, you know, you know, I've been much. extremely, extremely well, well, blessed. Well, I have an idea for you, Damon. I mean, I'm, I'm here to pitch it, but I've always thought about it for a long it's time. A pitch, it's, Henry, a, it's, it's a pitch, Henry. Don't try to disguise it. You know, I'm a, a short king. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, know, <laughs> you know, I'm gonna be nice to you just because I, I ain't trying to cash yeah. on the face. But other than that, <laughs> I'm not interested. But go yeah, ahead. Go yeah. ahead. I'm, 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 I'm gonna be nice to both of y'all. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, obviously, you know, you know, my, my wife is she's she got about three inches on me. You know, she's taller than me. All right, all right. But it's also like, okay, why can't a girl can get implants? They can do X, Y, Z, but what about a man? 
You know what I'm saying? So what I was thinking is like, what are you talking about, homie? What? No, 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 no. I ain't trying to talk about that. What, what I'm saying is accommodation. You know, is and, and and I feel like the market is somewhat, especially the fact that you're in fashion. I feel like it could be a little untapped. Because obviously, you know, I you know, I got I got some products on right now. No. It, it gives me about a good inch. And well, let half. me tell you something, man. No the Hulk, the Hulk is give you two inches because I'm pretty sure doing myself. <laughs> Just letting you know. But that's what I'm saying. Why not come up with a shoot that will give a mad hype to where it's not a necessarily a brand name. It's still stylish, but you have no idea that it's got about two to three inches on that thing, but mm. it's fashionable. And yeah. it's something it's something that something that you know, I love shoes. I yeah, think you're gonna look like a nurse. Already. It's fine. Yeah. Um, uh Prince Prince did that for a long time. He could play ball in them too. It just happened yeah. to be heels. But uh, <laughs> you know. Okay, speaking of you see that. what I'm saying, David? David, tell no, me you have not thought about was, that. I'm five for seven and a half, homeboy. <laughs> I understand what you're saying. I go, oh, my lady sometimes look like she's taking her little friend to the park. <laughs> but it's all good, baby. You know what I'm saying? I'm, 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 I'm secure with myself, Pippin. Right. Okay, speaking of that, there's, we got a little segment here we call Out of the Cage. Okay. You know, and, um, you know, Out of the Cage, one thing, you being such a, you know, fashion guy, it's one thing that I want you to just kind of comment on. And I want you to kind of look at some of these and some of the, as you see now, fighting, it's more than just fighting now. You know, we, we are, in a sense, you know, the stars and influencers now to where, you know, people are watching us. Yeah. What we're doing outside of the cage and what we're wearing outside of the cage. So, yeah. you know, we have a couple of little drip checks I want you to, you know, to, okay. to check out with us. And you just let us know your take on, on whether these is, this is something that you would... <laughs> <clears throat> you know, you would, you would you would say a fighter needs to invest more in their brand, or you could say, okay, that's I'm it right with there. with the psychologist. Yeah. You know what? I'm, I, I don't know if I can judge cats about their they, they, they style, no. because it's, a, it's an independent <laughs> expression. First of all, I'm going to try to do the best I can. Drip check right now on set. What you thinking? Well, I'm, I'm thinking you know, very coordinated. Everything looks good. Uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of flair on those pants. I was wondering yeah. if you got them. Hey, this is new. It's a new. It's a new no, no, joint. no, no. It's, I, I yeah. love the shoes. I definitely love the shirt. Thank you. Uh, the pants. I was just wondering, did you get them tailored or that you just got them? That's uh, all. It was out the, it was I just out got them. The, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That that's what it was. But I love I love full cuts like that. It reminds me of the you know the, the '60s down. You know, like like when the, yeah the, they had a full cut. I love it. Um, usually Emperor. Yeah. Um, oh, so man. drip Look check right there. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. See lacquer. that this no. one. Yeah, that yeah, one right Nigeria. there. Yeah. Listen. That one. Listen. That one right there. You. Yeah. You gotta. You gotta be. Yeah. No. 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 It, it's, to do that. You know. That's what it is. You know. It's the way. But you know what I like? There's a turtleneck on me. Or what, yeah. what is that? I like. I do. I like that actually. But yeah, I mean, it was it. But it's representing Nigeria. It's representing strength and honor, and it, it is yeah. very looking. Much. And but that's a that's cheetah, right? Of the yeah. print, right? It, it's strong. But I mean, you, you're a fighter, and that is that was a that's a world stage you're on. You have to stand out. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people don't. Yeah. But you that, know that was a statement piece. Right no, that's there. a statement piece. That's a statement shot. Now. And that was you, New now, York. But now that's not the shot where you're eating a nasty ass sandwich. You got a lot of stuff on your base because then it would have yeah. looked different. You just happen to show me where where you're looking really pretty. Nah, you, you know? yeah, of course. You know, the, you got to keep it classy. Okay, got it. All right, it was okay. classy, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Henry, <laughs> Henry, <laughs> is that you? You got your custom pillows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is that Henry, what did you make that? That, that? that looks like a pretzel. Oh my God! Yeah, you just missing the cheese. Oh man. wow! <laughs> <laughs> now what I want to know oh, from yeah. you is: Is was, this good for the brand or yo, what? I was trying is to this? be an ass. Nah. yo, no, 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 no. Honestly, that was one of the scariest movies. That Mel Gibson joint when he was coming through. When he was coming through. Apocalypse. Yo, yo, that's the joint. Was, that that's it right there. Really yo, I, yo, I like this type of stuff. So, um, yeah, I like that, man. I like that. Did right. he win that fight? Oh, now, no, now we all now we all know where this is from here. This was a this was a re you know, basically just reenactment of a, a previous time in history. Yeah. And do you think he nailed this fit? Nah. Nah. That was nah, Joe know, Frazier, right? Is yeah, that was that what it was? Yeah, that Joe was... Frazier, I believe, wore this back in the so day. Frazier wore the on the because the coat is fly. Yeah. But the way he put the coat with that, yeah, it, it, it looks like it looks work like he's right. got PJ's on, bro. Yeah, hit. that that nah. Yeah, it didn't look good. she missed on this that one, Connor. Super juice. Now you see this one. 
with my brother. He looking smooth. Israel yeah, yeah, yeah. Adesanya. Bend, bender. Yeah, he looking, he looking. He always looks smooth, though. He, 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 he focuses on his joint. Yeah. Like, he always looking smooth, yeah, man. You, you like that pearl necklace that he wears? I couldn't see it. Pearl? Uh, yeah, listen, man. Hey, smooth, listen. Joe. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that. <laughs> oh, now. Now, did you see this <laughs> fight? No, I ain't see that. You didn't see this fight? This was Deontay Wilder walking out in this, uh, I believe, the second fight with the Gypsy King. Uh, well, let me ask Tyson you something, because I got a question for y'all. Because sometimes people come out like that, and they come out to these big songs, they start flipping and dancing, and then they get choked out in 30 seconds. How does that feel? Wait, do you, do, does, does somebody, do you know, the fight is like, y'all, I was so busy dancing and singing. <laughs> with yeah. my with my with my you know you know my god of thunder outfit yeah. on and dude choke me out you know Do you that, ever think like that yeah yeah it's uh you know that's that's a big thing too in the sport it depends on the, the artist whichever guys but that's a fear of some guys it's really a fear i get it and it goes in with it with you know talking you know how do I promote this fight? Yeah. Do I talk a lot of shit? Do I talk a lot of crap? Because yeah. I could go out there and get embarrassed. And this is all part of it. You you do all the, the whole show for entertainment. You go out there and get embarrassed. Because yeah, that's a that's a lot of equipment to pack up that's on stage when yeah. you when you when you rolling out on a gurney. Absolutely. Yeah. And they got they got your little they got your little helmet in the bag. You yeah. know. But yeah. he even even in this fight, Damon, he actually blames the size of the suit. On why he ended up getting knocked out by the gym. Oh, he guy. got knocked out. He got knocked out mm. because apparently, like, the whole suit weighed close to about forty to fifty pounds. And it was mm. just like the walk out the fight. And then the dude the like fifty goes and buys yeah. it. You know, fifty. Yeah. I mean, up some place. Yeah, no, the dude's a lot time. bigger too, man. So once you take that thing off, you probably. Because I will be very honest, yeah. I don't even know what it is honestly, um, because you know, my mind dyslexic. I I mix up a lot of the fights. It's, uh, it's Deontay Wilder. And, oh, Deontay Wilder. Uh, yeah, Deontay okay. Wilder. And a shout out to Deontay Wilder. But, yeah, no, no, of course. Uh, I, I know this one was, uh, yeah, this one was a a tough one. You know. Ooh, what's up, man? Chocolate, Look at that chocolate chrome. Yeah, Look like at that. that. I like that, Eddie Murphy. Um, yeah, yeah I that's got that it. raw moment. I got it. I got it raw, baby. Yeah, I, I wanted to it. step out. You know, shout out like my man Patty that, like behind me too. I like the fact that your pants is baggy, man. I like that. I mean, yeah. you know, meaning you got some looseness in there because Eddie, Eddie was just definitely yeah, disrespectful just with that outfit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's sick, man. All right. Oh, no, homie. No, no, I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. Let's move on. Oh, whoa, okay. <laughs> with, the okay. with the top, oh, with the top hat. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, now please give me the background. Where, where was this? Where were we going? Yeah, and... I was, I was promoting my book tour, and again, it goes back. I have a little book, they, little thing to learn to earn. Uh, one, it is the top business book for children five, six, and seven. And my theory with this is. When a kid sees me in on Shark Tank with my Fubu or my expensive Tom Ford suit on, they don't care. So when I walk into school and when I talk to kids, they go, "Oh, look at that! Are you a magician? Yeah, I'm gonna teach you how to get the hell out of your mama's house at 18 years old. I'm gonna mm. teach you how to get paid for what you would do for free, and I'm gonna teach you everything that you would buy. You can sell. It's magic. So I wear that hat." Because I want to create magic for children to give them financial intelligence. What, what, what's yeah, the name of that book? Fire. Little Damon Learns to Earn. Wow. Okay, I need to buy that for my daughter. Mm. Oh, yeah. But look at that. Mm. That was, I, I, mean, I know. It looks great. There's a little ash on that bottom lip. It's a little bit. It's a little bit. Yeah, you know, little, I wasn't gonna say little, nothing. Little, I wasn't gonna say nothing, but yeah, you know, it's a little bit. I need to put a little, little, little. little you my man, so little, I ain't wanna. Little, yeah, little I ain't wanna. Back of that hat. <laughs> I ain't wanna say nothing, that. Right? Yeah, we could we could have took care of that mm -hmm. with the little lip balm. Yeah. All right. And right. that that was it for us. Mm. Yeah, my man. I feel um, very strong about the ending. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even see my hat game. No, you didn't I see my hat game. game. That, hat yeah, game. when I when the hair started sliding back, you know the hat game had to increase. Oh yeah, you know, baby. To, yeah. But <laughs> yeah. man, man it's, it's it's been a pleasure to yeah, be able man. to you know you to give us Thank a moment you, brother, of your man. time Thank to you speak so with much. us. Yo, I love the questions. Thank I you. hope that every every single athlete and a regular person listens to it because it's simple app. It's simple application. You're gonna be by that ringside anyway. Just take the numbers. Yes. That's it. Yeah.
That's you know? it. Thank you. Thank you. That's a, that's a tremendous piece of advice because I know some of us, we we do, we don't want to bother mm -hmm. some guys and we do know what it's like to, yeah, you, you know, have people like, oh, coming at you. you know? to take care of that. Yeah. So, you know, I appreciate that. You All know, right. for sure. It's a pleasure. So Once again, the amazing Damon John. Appreciate it. Thank My you, brother. guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. So I'm your host, Henry Cejudo, a.k.a. Triple C. And the Nigerian Nightmare, Kamaru Usman. We out.